Hi, good morning and welcome back to the Keys History and Discovery Center. I am curator Brad Bertelli and we are continuing our Tuesday morning exploration of the great exhibits and the great things we have to offer here at the, at the museum. And we've done a lot of exhibits downstairs and we're now kind of moving to different parts of the uh, different parts of the museum. So today we're in the Jerry Wilkinson Research Library and we're going to talk about the books behind me, uh, which is we've done we made a lot of connections in our seven years here. And one of the really cool connections that we made was with the uh, publisher of the both the Keynoter and the Reporter uh, newspapers. Once the when the Reporter went all digital, they had all these bound copies of all their editions and they had nowhere to store them. They did not want them to go to Miami and kind of, they, they wanted to keep them local so the people could still access them. So they gave us a call and asked if we were interested and we said, absolutely. And then once the keynoter uh, went completely digital about a year or so later, uh, they, again, we were contacted and asked if we would like to house all of their um, bound copies of the, of the keynoter. And uh, we said, absolutely. And we have over 200 uh, 220, 230 of these bound editions of all of the newspapers. Um, some of them are missing, some of the 80s for some reason, the 80s are missing, I'm not sure why. Uh, but it's really cool, they, they go back to 1964, 1965, and it's, these are the only copies, and, and we're really honored to have been asked to house them. Uh, it's another one of the great things we have to offer here at, at the Research Library. There's so much fun things, so many fun things to look at, and, and uh, and, and look through and I mean to look at the, the prices of houses, the prices of, of, of you know gas and of, of rent and all these things going back the years. It's incredible to see how much has changed. And um, I know Erin, uh, who's also our, our third member of the team here. You know her her birth announcement is in here. Her, you know there's wedding announcements. There's all kind, there's so much great information. And so it's very easy to open one of these up and just start scrolling through and get lost because there's so many surprising stories, so many really neat things that have happened in the Florida Keys that are really surprising and some things you forget about, some things you don't. And one of the, one of the really cool things, one of, one of my, actually my very favorite story I've ever come across in the keynoters or the reporters was an amazing story that happened in 1977 um, that was in, uh, and uh, David Goodhue, when he was the editor at the um, at the Reporter, kind of clued me in. I, I um, used to write, write a column for the Reporter, and uh, he said, "You got to look at this one story in, from 1977." And kind of referencing the shirt I'm wearing, uh, it was an actual sighting of the skunk ape, which is Florida's version of the Bigfoot, uh, that happened in Key Largo in 1977. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a little bit about that story uh, um, and and it was you know it, it was a legitimate sighting it happened in on July in 1977 kind of where the snappers restaurant is today there was a family called the Hockmans Hockmans um, he and his and, and his son were out by the mangroves looking for some old bottles which is a, a great pastime that people still do kind of patrolling looking for like all these old bottles from the 1800s early 1900s and they uh, were down at the mangrove edges kind of poking around finding bottles when they had this they, they could detect this horrible stench and um, they also uh, and it kind of smelled like a, a wet dog that had been or a dog that hadn't been bathed in, in, in forever that had been you know suddenly got, got rained on so it was just a horrible stench and they looked over and they saw what appeared to be a skunk ape uh, and he described it as, sta as standing over eight feet tall, weighing over 500 pounds. And it wasn't just a one-time sighting. It was, it, the sightings happened over a period of, of two weeks. And it, it, you know, at one point, um, his house was kind of uh, between, uh, just, just off overseas highway, and he cleared 30 feet of brush or away from his house. And still, uh, one night his wife was you know, in bed and, and she looked out through the jealousy windows and saw these eyes staring back at her. And the mom, and, you know, after, after a point, the, the mom said, you know, we're out of here. Packed up the kids, moved up to Homestead, and, and uh, the husband stayed with his shotgun because he wanted to, he, he wanted to you know, hunt, hunt this thing down. And uh, it wasn't just like, a, you know, this one person. He was a, 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 he was a veteran. He, I think he was a, maybe even a former policeman. Um, so he was a legitimate witness. The police were called on several occasions to investigate. Um, and they took it very seriously. Uh, there was never, never any, any evidence really found. The National Enquirer came out 
because, uh, because Hockman, Hockman had taken a picture with his Instamatic and they had come to look at the picture. Uh, there was also some scientists from an institute in Florida who's no longer, I, I can't remember the name of it, um, came out and, and apparently you know, found, a, 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 found a footprint um, and they kind of documented it, but that's you know, kind of out in the ether and no one knows what, what happened to that. But the story keeps repeating over a series of weeks in, in, in the reporter, which is you know, really interesting. And then the last one, uh, after I, I think week four, there was a group of, of guys from Tavernier who were going to form a hunting party. And they were going to go out uh, and, and look for, look for these, the skunk ape and try to find out what was going on because it had been cited by not just Hockman, but by his neighbor as well. It had been seen, uh, uh, seen under, underneath a shed. It had been seen, you know, uh, outside the window and standing, you know, very, very tall and very, very menacing. Um, and uh, well, the saddest part about the story was that this, uh, this skunk ape team of, of four guys who were packed up with, you know, they had snake venom or a snake kit in case there was, they, got, they found a snake and got bit. They had water. They were, you know, out looking flashlights. And it said, you know, the, the last line from the last story was, you know, come back next week for the report on, on what the guys found. And nothing ever happened again. And uh, so that, that was the end of the skunk ape tale because you know, there was never any report of, of what they may or may not have found. But what was kind of cool, kind of the after, you know, because it was such an unusual thing to happen in the Florida Keys. Of course, someone wants to make a buck off it. And there was a t-shirt company in Isla Mirada who, 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 who made a, 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 a t-shirt. Uh, with a, a drawing of the skunk ape, and it said the, key, the skunk ape lives in Key Largo. If anybody out there has, a, has one of these t-shirts, the museum would love to have one of those for our collection, because it's one of those really cool pieces of history that is a legitimate piece of history. It, 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 you know, it's one of those things that happens. Um, it's, you know, it, it, it's one more really cool story in the Florida Keys, and as the Florida Keys is one thing, it is a place that is filled with really cool stories. And uh, so that's and, and that's just one of the kind of one of the things that you're gonna find or, or, or that you can find in these tomes and, and just never you know it's it's you never know what you're gonna find is, is kind of the, the end of that story. Um, there's so many great stories, so, so many great things to find, and this is just one of the really cool collections that we have. We have Jerry Wilkinson donated his uh, magnificent magnificent collection of of art articles and artifacts and images, the late Jim Klepper. We have a lot of a lot of things that he collected, um, and more of an arche he's more of an archaeological archaeologist uh, guy. So we have lots of great information on Indians and 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 the, and the, um, and the different prehistoric sites in the area. Willie Dry, who wrote that great book, uh, um, Storm of the Century, that was just reissued recently, just just several months ago. In fact, he's giving a, a presentation tomorrow night, uh, a, a, a virtual presentation, um, and he collected, he, he donated all, all his source material, and all, all his interviews and, and materials. So we have this really great collection in, in the Jerry Wilkinson Research Library um, that is really one of a kind and the most, probably the largest uh, collection of Upper Keys history outside of Key West, or, or Florida Keys history outside of Key West, which is something that we're really proud of and, and really thrilled to be able to to have collected and to keep stored in a place that, because some of the places that this stuff had been uh, was un, you know, unair conditioned and there were bug issues. And uh, this is, we're really honored to, to have this place stored in an area. In fact, when we were collecting Jerry Wilkinson stuff, that was just as Hurricane Irma came up and his house uh, is located in Harry Harris Park and it suffered a lot of damage. So we got a lot of the, that material out just in the nick of time. And this is what happens with a lot of these materials is, you know, grandma and grandpa have collected it and then they pass away and the grandkids go to, to clear out, you know, the garage and find these boxes of junk. And it, sometimes it turns out to be this really important material and it's really fantastic, you know, old pictures and stories and images and, and things, artifacts even, that, you know, kind of just get lost forever. And that's another, another great thing that we're doing here at the Keys History Discovery Center is housing this information so it's retained and so it's safe and it's available for future generations to enjoy. In the meantime, uh, one of my jobs is to collect this stuff and, you know, and, and get these stories out there, which is what I've been doing for the last seven years and what I'll continue to do is just learn more and more about the history of the Florida Keys and bring it out so it's not just tucked away in some dusty closet, that it's out in the open for all of us to enjoy and, and really enriches our, our community
for both our, you know, both our visitors and the people who live here who don't really, might not really understand the uh, tremendous amount of history that there is in, in the Florida Keys. And we're really proud of, to be able to, to do that for everybody. And uh, so thank you for all the support. How does one access the Jerry Wilkinson Research Library? So Jill is asking me, how is, does one access the Jerry Wilkinson Research Library? It is open to the public. All you do is, uh, is by appointment only. And so you contact me at either curator at keysdiscovery.com or, my, my, or, or you can give me a call, 305-395-9889, and you can make an a, make a, 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 um, a appointment. And uh, you can come in and, and, uh, and, and, and explore and, and see all the things that we have to offer, um, which is another reason that we're here, another reason why we appreciate your support so we can continue this, this mission that, that we started on seven years ago that we're we just have come an amazing way in seven years, and we're just looking forward to just continually, continuing to build and, and to grow and to be able to offer our, our community and our visitors just more and more every year. So thank you very much for all your support. And in the meantime, I'm going to uh, come back, go back and look through some of these and see what kind of more stories I can, I can dig up and, uh, and communicate with our, with our audience. So thank you so much, and you guys have a great day, and I will see you again. Uh, next Tuesday, we'll be back. i um, not quite sure yet what we're going to talk about, but we're going to explore some more great things about the Keys History and Discovery Center. So you guys have a safe weekend or a safe week. Thank you so much.